Hey, what up, YouTube? It's Holy Joe Rock and Roll with my baby Holy Joe Rock and Roll. Yeah. This video is about economics. So if you're not into economics for whatever reason, just watch one of my other videos. Just click on the suggested video link wherever it is and just watch one of my other videos. But if you're still with me, thank you for watching. I wanted to, this has been bothering me for years. In 2007, I was traveling on business, keeping Eastern Europe safe from Al-Qaeda attacks. I was in Sofia, Bulgaria. And on CNN, there was, oh, you know what it was? It was during the uh, the summit they have every year in Switzerland, Davos. It was the Davos summit. Does anybody remember this? The leaders from the emerging world, China particularly, and India in particular, these foreign ministers or economic ministers, I can't remember who they were, doesn't matter, and here's why. They both came out, one right after the other, saying, and I quote, Our country has decoupled from the West. Our economies are decoupled from the USA. You know, from China, from India, from all these people. We have uh, organic growth that is going to continue to propel us forward. You know, 8, 9, 10% uh, growth, GDP growth per year. And I, I thought to myself, that sounds nice, but that's ridiculous. And what happened? People, what happened? Just one quarter later, U.S. went into, <clears throat> was already going into the recession, right? Because the housing bubble had just burst in around September, October, finally December, January. It had definitely burst. The first quarter of 2008, China, boom, GDP down 25%. People in the streets not getting paid, not, not working. Uh, exports to the U.S. down 25%. India, whatever. India is India. Another, rec another recession, you know. Millions of people making a dollar a day or less, right? And now, just today, what brought it back up today is the General Secretary of the EOCD or whatever ECOD. I guess the these. This is the the Minister of the G20. Uh, you know the countries, the developed countries. So it's like a Economic Council of Developed Countries. He comes out saying that the best thing for the developed world, for the, well, for the developed world, yes, he said that last, but the best thing that could happen for the emerging markets, for the uh, third world, basically, as well as the developed world, is for the U.S. to come back from, you know, come back stronger, to recover, fully recover. Uh, he did note that the U.S. is an amazing country, and, you know, even though we are under, you know, a lot of pressure and under employment is down, we're still creating new jobs every month and we are slowly if the trend continues reducing the deficits and with the trend line meaning with the trend line meaning eventually we could come into balance balance budgets which would be good which would be good but obviously all of these countries that depend on exports which includes india which includes china need a strong us Europe is in, still in recession, at least Western Europe is still in recession. Central Eastern Europe, formerly known as, you know, let's say the, the West uh, Eastern Europe, um, I guess it's, you know, sort of growing neutrally, positively, struggling, but moving forward. And this is just, just something that I just had to get off my chest because it's been bothering me for years. I knew these jokers were just full of shit. And these ministers from China, from India, from all of these, even Brazil, I think it was Brazil. If I'm wrong, I'm sorry about Brazil, but definitely India and China, these guys came out there saying that they decoupled from the West and they were good to go. And, you know, two, three months later, boom, they just collapsed under their own weight because they are so export dependent. So before you ever bet against the U.S., think again, you know, the U.S., with all of its problems, it's still the most dynamic economy because of the people. Now, I know there's a lot of people who maybe would like to start a business or would like to expand their business, but there's so much uncertainty. Even from here, you feel that Detroit just filed for bankruptcy, which has been something a long time in coming. Finally, they did that. Uh, but you could just see it eventually it's going to happen. Detroit's just been just a horrible place for, for growth. I mean... Governments always have a expansion plan, but they don't have a scale down plan. I mean, when tax revenues go down, you have to have a plan to scale down. That means, you know, maybe you have less schools, maybe you have less libraries, maybe you have 
less road crews. Uh, maybe you have different trash collection schedules to accommodate lower tax revenues. You know, maybe you renegotiate with the, the unions, which these guys wouldn't do, refuse to do. I and mean, this is, you know, it, that's been a negative trend, which seems like it's finally reached its, the tipping point, and it just kind of collapsed. Now, all these union people, all these retirees, they're going to lose money or they're going to lose benefits. They're going to have to. In a bank, any, any bankruptcy procedure, any unsecured creditors are going to get wiped out. Maybe you'll get 10%, 20% of the dollar, but you'll be lucky to get that. Uh, the secured creditors, um, uh, what's his name, Mr. Ord, who is like was the f temporary like uh, emergency manager for Detroit, he said that the secured creditors will get paid. Uh, they're secured, so what, what does that mean? I mean, they... they what are they secured by? I mean, government buildings, streets, I don't know. But anyway, the secured creditors will get compensated, will get paid. The unsecured creditors, it's a big question mark. Anyhow, reporting to you live, Holy Joe Rock and Roll, just something I had to get off my chest. Stay positive, stay up, look for opportunities. When they zig, you zag. Don't give up. Never surrender. Peace out.